So in intermittent fasting, there's obviously a ton of nuance and variation, and there's a lot of research done. They're like, well, not well, whatever. It's hard to understand what is, quote unquote, the best, healthiest way to do it. Now, obviously, individual variation, your own metabolism, your own eating habits are going to play into this. It's like, obviously, right? But you see things like this that I think I need to call out because I don't agree with this. Um, this study said habitually skipping breakfast might be associated with elevated risk of cancer. And then so it's Dr. Jack Cruz. I think he's usually got some pretty good stuff to say, but apparently he's a big like eat breakfast guy. And I got into fasting because eating breakfast completely wrecked me, made me feel like crap, made me have a, uh, a spike and a crash usually two to three hours after where I just needed to take a nap. And then when I stumbled upon intermittent fasting and I was like, oh, well maybe breakfast right in the morning is the most important meal of the day. And so I stopped, started pushing it back and lo and behold, I felt better, right? Even to this day, if I try to eat breakfast, like after a few bites, I feel sick. If I force feed myself, I feel sick. I then feel sluggish and tired, same symptoms as before, okay? Now, let's look at this actual study though because this is what even people that understand how bad nutrition research really is, even these people like this guy, which I, I bet you he gets this, right? They just ignore, they, they ignore this point, right? And they just like cherry pick studies that might benefit, or uh, not benefit, but that would highlight the thing that they believe in. Okay, so this study is based on surveys. Let's look at it. The study was based on a Kaluian community, which I think maybe that's in Hawaii, um, which includes many employees in a coal mining industry in Tang, Tangshan. Oh, it's in China. So Kaluian, Kaluian? Yeah, I guess it's in China. But each, so let's see, it was a bunch of people, they were, including the study and were followed up biannually. Each follow-up included face-to-face -face questionnaire surveys, body measurements, clinical examinations, and laboratory tests. All individuals provided information on their, on their dietary intake with a semi-quantitative food frequency questionnaire. Again, a questionnaire is just like, I mean, at least they did do some testing or whatever, um, you know, but it's like, this is a specific population in China that definitely has probably customs and routines and habits and ate certain foods. And they're trying to create a correlation to those that ate breakfast and whether they're gonna have a higher risk of certain cancers. It's like, well, are you counting for those that smoke that don't smoke, those that exercise that don't exercise? Like, you know, like there's so many freaking variables and that's why I despise questionnaire studies because they don't, they don't tell you anything. They can maybe suggest something that you should consider, like maybe eating breakfast for some people, if their body responds well to it, could be worth trying. And maybe you could maybe fast more later in the day. Personally, like I said to be in this video, that doesn't work for me. And force feeding myself and feeling like shit makes no sense, literally zero sense, okay? Do I think I'm at a higher risk for cancer because I'm not eating breakfast the first thing when I wake up in the morning, which I, think based on a lot of the anthropological and biological data that we have is not something our ancestors were, were probably done a whole lot of, especially men that would just kind of like leave, go hunt for the day. And then, you know, I ideally kill something and eat it later. Huge meal. That's basically what I do. I don't think I'm at a higher risk for cancer because of this. Right. And then again, women and men, different eating patterns, different eating patterns historically that our ancestors had. Women would have typically grazed and they would have gathered throughout the day. Men would have gone and found very calorie rich prey that you would stalk and then hunt and then drag back and then eat a bunch. And you see this, a lot of men prefer almost an OMAD one meal a day and they prefer to eat like probably a bigger meal and if they're gonna do a second meal like I do later, it's much smaller. I just don't literally have room in the stomach for it. So all things to keep in mind. The simple way just to close this thought out, the simple way to see a study like this and to think about it objectively is to go find the summary or the abstract, find the methods used and read through their methods. Now they still use a lot of globity glock nonsense verbiage and things that like average people don't understand, but you can look for like 
meta-analysis, right, which is usually a bunch of other research papers that they analyze, and then that's supposed to tell them something, right? Questionnaires, uh, follow-ups, <laughs> mail-in questionnaires, even worse, we're like, oh my gosh, like they actually perform quote-unquote research based on that. So am I going to stop eating breakfast in the morning or start? No, I'm not. And maybe some days I will because it's good to be flexible in your eating, to be varied because that's what our ancestors would have done. 